Welcome to 3D Drawing for Model Railway. In today's episode I'm going to be working on producing these third rail um, insulator um, chairs. So the, the purpose of these are for my new layout of Lisbon Bridge. The, it's obviously set in Southern Region, Network South East area. And obviously that's then got third rail. Uh, the third rail I'm going to use is uh, Pico Code 40. And the previous ways I would have done this would be either glue it directly to the sleeper or use track pins file the head relatively flat and then um, solder or glue the rail to the track pin so I had the idea that maybe I could 3D print them and then that would make my life a little bit easier with regards to not having to, to worry too much about soldering to the track pins which is quite a laborious task um, and obviously these would potentially look a little bit more realistic than just a track pin pushed through a bit of sleeper. So yeah in this episode I'm going to go through how I've designed these um, both this version which is for the wooden wooden sleeper which has got a flat surface and also for the concrete sleeper which has got an angled surface on the top of the sleeper. So without further ado let's get started. Okay so to start I'm going to create a sketch I'm going to draw the, the actual surface of the chair the, the rail will sit on so I'm going to create a centre point rectangle and just going to drag that out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two rectangular parts on the end and then we can start to look at dimensions. Okay, so the section between the two end bits, which is where the rail is actually going to sit, uh, I'm going to need that to be sorry, between that point and that point. So this bit here is where the rail is going to sit. I need that to be... So the rail itself is one millimeter, so I'm going to go with 1.2 millimeters, actually 1.3. Give me a little bit of room uh, so that any uh, shrinkage during the printing won't, won't affect what, what happens. And then these two end bits, uh, I think I'm going to go for a 0.5 millimeter size, same on this one. Okay, now we should have something that sits about the right sort of area. So this center, I say, center bit is going to be. 1.3 millimeters and the two ends are going to be 0.5 and the rail is going to sit in this middle bit here. Uh, dimensionally across, um, this, again this is a little bit of a suck it and see. I, I haven't really got any proper dimensions for these. Uh, so I'm going to go with 1.2 millimeters just because it gives me that sort of nice rectangular shape. Okay so let's first of all extrude all three of the face parts and I'm just going to make that I'm going to go for half a millimetre thick turn this sketch back on and I can select these two end bits and then extrude those and I think I'm going to go maybe a little bit more than that 0.4 millimeters. So ha now having got it flashed out, I'm actually thinking that maybe it's a little bit too thick on the bottom. I'm just going to alter that. So I'm going to edit that sketch and I'm just going to drag that down. I think I'm going to go for 0.3. Um, I'm still relatively happy with the height, but I think width-wise, I think I'm going a bit too wide there. So I'm going to edit that, I'm going to drag that down, and we're going to say 0.8, so I'm going to take 0.4 millimetre off. 
Okay, I think I think I'm sort of happy with that sort of shape. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add the first of the two ceramic pots underneath. So go ahead, create and sketch on the bottom surface, and I'm going to use the center point I uh, circle here, and I'm going to create a circle. And I think I'm going to go yeah, maybe 1.3 millimeters in diameter. We select those three profiles and then we're going to extrude those. And I'm actually going to do a two sided extrusion. I'm going to come up 0.1 millimeter and I'm going to come down, I think, about 0.4 millimeters. And I'm going to create that as a new body. And the reason for that is I want to curve off the top surface. So I'm going to use the fillet tool on this, this top edge and I'm just going to round it out to about 0.4 diameter. I actually probably want to take a little bit off the bottom there. And so I'm just going to edit that bottom and take off. Reduce that to maybe 0.35 millimeters. Okay, so you see how the reason I've gone upwards is I've got this little overlap at the ends here. It's just to increase the strength from the top because there isn't, if you do it right to the very um, same level, you're not going to have much overlap and there won't be much connecting material. Okay, so again, there's another part underneath. So we're going to come back into creating a sketch on the bottom surface and again I'm going to go center point circle and drag it out. It's not going to come to the same size, it's actually going to be slightly smaller. So I'm going to go for 1.1 millimeters in diameter on that bottom and we're going to extrude that out. Again I'm coming 0.4 creating a new body to start with and I'm going to chamfer this around the top surface and I'm going to change it to two distance so left and right one I'm going to come in by 0.1 millimeter and then the vertical I'm going to come down the full length so it's making it uh, angled in slightly see the shape I'm aiming for there okay so the next thing I'm going to put is the, the base plate on the bottom so again just creating another sketch work on the bottom see how I'm just working my way down using again center point rectangle here and I'm going to drag it out, sort of that sort of size. So we're going for a, a width of 1.4, and I'm going to go vertical height of 2 millimeters. Again, selecting that, the profiles internally, extrude, and let's come down maybe 0.2 millimeters. We'll get them to join, we might as well join these body parts up as well while we're here. So, target body is the top one, and then we'll add those two underneath. Okay, and then on these, they've got um, obviously the, the bolts that hold them down. So, I'm going to create a sketch on the upper surface of that, and we're going to be using a polygon uh, circ circumscribed polygon and sort of in this sort of area here I'm going to go for six sided I'm going to go for a diameter of 0.2 position the from the edge okay so we'll go for 0 0.3 with that and just for ease we'll probably go for 0 0.3 on that side as well and 
it, it's not being constrained because obviously you can rotate this round. So we'll just if we add that in, then it will lock it in. Don't need to change the numbers. Or if you don't do, what it will do is rotate that. Okay, height rise. We can then extrude this. A lot of this detail probably won't even print if I'm honest with you. I'm going to go for a height of 0.5 because obviously we're, we're talking something that's you know, millimeters in, in size. Okay, let's pattern the feature that we've just created and we'll go along the axis. That way. for 1.4 we'll go for just the two of them and then the, we can pattern it in that direction as well and again just the two so we're 0.8 in that direction by the looks of that and that looks to be sort of squaring those off Again, I'm not going to worry too much about rotation to make them look different. And, you know, they're all going to be nuts and bolts. You know, people aren't going to notice that sort of detail on there. So that's the basic shoe, uh, sorry, the basic chair that I'm going for. Um, now you could just print those as they are, put a couple of supports underneath. Um, but the other thing I want to think about is this is going to be placed on a mixture of concrete and um, wooden sleepers so the concrete sleepers themselves they have a angle or a slope on the outside of the the sleeper so what we'll do is we'll keep this one for the flat wooden sleepers and then we'll do move copy create a copy of this and if we just move it sideways we can then draw on the side yeah we'll draw on the side profile an angle to it so I've been and measured um, some of the sleepers and the height difference is 0.4 millimeters from one end to the other we can then extrude that to the other profile there. Okay, so yeah, we've got this, like I said, this angle plate at the bottom now, and that will sit on the concrete sleepers. So I said measurement that I've measured is edge of the sleeper to where the pan roll clip is across this length is two millimeters here, and then the slope down the sleeper. It would give you a 0.4 millimeter difference between top and bottom, and as you can see, I've obviously had to go for um, a size that comes off the bottom of here, so that these are all set the same height with the rail. You don't want to mismatch them and have your third rail going different heights. Okay, so the next thing is I don't want to physically rely on adding supports in G2 box. Uh, first of all, because um, I, I want them to be accurate on the edge here and repeatable. So uh, I, I don't think I'm going to individually place them into Chief 2 box. It'll be more a case of I'll print a, or well, you'll see what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom, uh, this bottom surface. So that's at an angle, that's going to create a problem. So let's. Let's create off this top surface here. I'm going to take a circle, I'm going to find the midpoint. So that's I didn't want to select, I want to find the midpoint, come off of it, and then draw a circle. Now I'm going to go for I think 1.4 millimeters in diameter. I want to move 
move that circle position just so that we want it to come off that centre point there. Let's rebind that. I wanted the very edge of the circle to just ever so slightly be overlapping the bottom of the base plate here. And then we can define that position just so that it's nice and locked in. shape come from? Ah, not the bottom of the nut. So again, we're just holding down um, shift and right clicking to get the profiles that we're after there. So holding down shift and left clicking to get those profiles. We're going to extrude that and I'm going to bring that out the base looking down a millimetre you can see there change that to join and then click on OK so what's, what my idea is here this is going to come out the bottom connect to a slightly bigger circle off the bottom here and then when we printed them we can just cut these through and then file that nice and flat so again, create a sketch, you'll see off the bottom surface, and select the centre point. I'm just going to go for a millimetre diameter, selecting the two profiles, extruding, and I'm just going to bring that down, say, a millimetre, and join. So the reason I've chose this position to put this onto is that's obviously the lowest point of the angle chair here so rather than going in the middle and then having to support the edge this this being the lowest point will be the supporting point uh, if we then uh, go and pattern the features we've just drawn and axis we'll bring across and we'll bring it across to the other model here. So if we come across, I've done four millimeters, that should put that in the correct position. And then click on OK. That's created a separate body. Now with this one, I could leave it on the edge there. I'm just going to move that. And I'm going to put that more central, so it's 0.8 millimeters. And then we can combine, make sure we get the two bodies correct. Body. Okay, body one and body five. Okay, so you can see how I've now created these two separately. Um, what I want to do now is through multiple of these at the same time and I'm going to create a base for them to sit on. So let's do body the, the concrete sleeper one first because that's what I'm going to need the most of. So do move and copy. Create copy. Move it over. There's two millimeters. Rather than doing copies like this, let's undo those and we can do a rectangular pattern of the body 
axis will be horizontal. I don't want too big of a gap. Don't know how much of what I want. Let's go for seven rows. We're going eleven millimeters. Is that going to be enough? I'm just trying to work out how many we're going to need. Probably more than that, actually. So there's a 12 by 12 there. Click on OK. And then on the bottom, I'm going to just create a rectangle that's slightly bigger than what we've just drawn. Select the profiles. Extrude that, and that's yeah. deciding it wants to go slow now. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, I think a one millimeter. Thickness there. So now I've got this base that they're all sat on that I can just import into Chitty Box and then just print it as is with no supports underneath. That's giving you the idea of how I'm going to do that. So hopefully you're able to follow that along with that video and if you, if you need these yourself. Um, then obviously you've got some here from this design. Uh, some things maybe I'm going to experiment with as I might, once I've printed these and see whether they work, maybe change the size of this slightly. So either maybe make the size a little bit smaller or the height a little bit more on the insert for the rail to city. But I, I think this will give a good representation and it'll certainly look better than what, would, what I'd have previously done using um, just bits of... Uh, track pins filed off and then soldered or glued on top of. So thank, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.